exciting pass to have the opportunity to fly out of California and represent the Houston Texans. And here we go. CJ will get it first as Franco Harris will take it to the 31. And that's where you got to have the opportunity here. We talked about that momentum. Can CJ capture it right here on his first drive? He's going to be in the Liberty White uniforms. And Joe Rice with that 818 tag and his gamer handle there will be in the steel blue uniforms. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if momentum, if you could obtain momentum of going against Joe Rice this early in the game, Scott, because we saw last game where Joe Rice gave up the first touchdown, and then he said to himself, okay, now I know what's going on here, and he rips off another 31 points uh, unanswered. So I think right now this is where they're kind of feeling each other out, and the second quarter is going to tell us a lot about these two guys. Flex round! Setting Flex their round. audibles, and now here we go. Flex round! Flex round! Opening drive here in the... Houston Flair, Texans Flair, Club Flair. Championship Final. Trips Flair, to the right. Flair, Flair, Flair. Check, check, Fournette check, check. back in the backfield along with McNabb. Cut. And Fournette will take it to the 35-yard line. Got, huh? Not today, baby. Remember Joe Rice gave up an opening touchdown to Ghani. One thing I remember from CJ's first game is we did get a load of Leonard Fournette. And you know what? If it's not broke, don't fix it. And he goes right back to Leonard Fournette for this championship game. And I don't blame him. Ohio! Ohio! Third and three now. So you got Ohio! Ohio! Fournette. Flex round! Flex round! Right beside McNabb off to the right. Bunch to the left. OBJ. Solo to the right. McNabb. Trying to run away from the pressure. Got to throw across his body, and he'll just throw it away. Just throw it away. I thought he had his running back to his right in the flat, but it looks like he was looking for more on that play. And when he realized he didn't have it, he just took the, uh, zero yards instead Flex of negative round. yards. Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Fourth and three. McNabb. <laughs> Boss makes a man miss. And plus territory at the 44. Huge play on fourth down. Ohio! Ohio! That'll move the chains. New set of downs here for CJ. Donovan. Gives it a four net. And he's going to. Lose three, make it four yards. I'll tell you what, that was just Flex blitzing, round. changing Flex the line of scrimmage for Joe Rice's defense on that play, and I don't Ohio. care who the running back Ohio. is, there wasn't any positive Ohio. yards to pick Ohio. up. 56 to Mike, boys, 56. Hot. Nab. It's it to Harris. I'll tell you what, right now, CJ's receivers, Ohio. whether it's Franco Harris, uh, uh, Randy Moss, they're doing a good job getting positive yards after the catch and after the first set of contact. McNabb with Lawrence Taylor barreling down on him. And that'll be dropping to be fourth and three. Now he's got a decision to make. It'll be a 53-yarder from there. I'll tell you what, credit the pressure because McNabb was not able to see Randy Moss. If he threw that ball to Randy a little sooner, it would have been a completion. And that just cross over the bar. And so he's held to a field goal on his opening drive. And now here comes Joe Rice in a 3 0 game. Gurley. A big hit from Dion. Dion using that speed, getting downfield, and not allowing Gurley to pick up the yards someone with his talent can pick up as a kickoff return. So here in the final. Joe Rice is going to get his first opportunity to hear trailing by a field goal. Two minutes gone by in the first. A nice job by CJ getting something on the board. I mean, right now, Joe Rice's smothering defense is something that sticks in my mind. So for CJ to get three points on the opening drive, that is a small victory for him. Alpha, Alpha. Wait, wait, wait. 
Quick throw. Randy Moss across the 50 of the 46-yard line. It's an 18-yard game. And again, you just see how comfortable Michael Vick is. They're sitting in the pocket. He's not uh, playing piano with his feet, as we like to say. When you think that somebody's coming around you, just a nice, safe pocket. It makes it easy to complete those passes. First and 10 at the 46 now. Orange, orange. Eagle, eagle. Wait, wait, wait. Vick. Quick throw. And that's sharp. Close to the first down. It's going to be second and two. And it allows you to open up your playbook. When it's second and two, you can either go deep thinking you're going to pick it up on the third down, or you can say, you know what, let's play the clock, let's play the downs, and let's get another set of first downs and maybe run in between the tackles. Alpha, Alpha. Watch right. Right Second and two at the 38. Vic, the lefty, threw that one into coverage. That's going to bring up a third down. And now, obviously, you're in four down territory. As soon as you turn the game on, you're in four down territory. But to only pick up two yards, you just expect Joe Rice, if he doesn't turn it over, to be able to do that. Go to the air. Quick throw, and it's picked off. We already saw that from Tavarius Moore in game number one for CJ and a little deja vu. You know what I said? You can't expect to have those turnovers. CJ said, man, shut up. Let me show you that this, this is what I do. I get turnovers. So a big, big interception for CJ. Well, he was talking about how big it is to that, able to control your user in Madden. And, boy, he just threw that guy open. Exactly. Well said, Scott. I mean, that's exactly what he did. And not just that, making sure he doesn't throw it out of bounds for a huge or for a big pick. -up. This is that interception again. As you see it from that user able to play underneath. We gave a little tip out there. We said the middle is closed. At first 10 yards, you're going to have to throw a deep middle. Yeah between the safeties of that cover too because there's no way you're fitting it inside. So now we got a second and one after a gain of nine on first down during the replay. Flex round, flex round. Just outside flex the round, red zone. So many options in the playbook right here. And he'll just get it to Delaney Walker. Has an opportunity here to have a 10 to nothing flex lead round, if he can punch round. it in. Goes to Fournette. Fournette. Try to lower his head and run over Lawrence Taylor. No, sir. It does a nice job reading the block for the big pickup of seven yards. I'll tell you what, it's too early to start talking about clock management, but anytime you keep the ball out of the hand of Joe Rice, you're doing something well. So good job by him utilizing his running game to keep the seconds ticking off the clock. Well, that is hit stick on truck. And they... Put all those features in the game in 2004 where you could really, you know, the trucking and the, the juking and the spinning and all that. Next year, with Ray Lewis on the cover, that's when they added the hit stick. Wow. They had a, so you had to counteract those playmaker controls that they called it back in the day. I like that. Let the defense have a little yeah, yeah, yeah. low on the impact. Too. I think even when you turned the game over, it said, like, the year of the defense or something like that. Like <laughs> Because the offense with Michael Vick on the cover in 04 had had, had its day. Second and goal. Will he get the snap off? No, we will be going to the second quarter. It's a three to nothing ball game. But CJ is down there knocking on the door with an opportunity to make it a two score game. I'll tell you what, this is pretty exciting. The first couple of games, not that the game was over going into the second quarter, but we had a feel of who had the momentum, who was having the success. But right now, this is still a very tight game. And CJ taking advantage of that interception if he can punch it in and put some more points on the board here. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Third and goal at the nine. Ohio! Ohio! This is big because if he doesn't Ohio, get it here, Scott, there's a huge decision he's going to have to make. Looking. Up underneath and he's throwing a pick. Jones! Could not keep his momentum. You know, when the camera s swings around, it's so hard to keep yourself going the right direction as Madden. 
That should have been a pick six. Uh, I'll tell you what, it should have been a pick six, but C, that, that was devastating for CJ because you need to get ahead on a guy like Joe Rice. If he had a chance to get up by 10 points, it really would have given him a nice, comfortable cushion. Vic was waiting. I believe that was Randy Moss trying to come open here. Take a look at it again. I mean, this should have gone the other way. But I can tell you, it's right, so hard right. to keep that momentum when that alpha, camera alpha. switches. Got you. Alpha, Alpha. Eagle, Eagle. Wait, wait, wait. Vic, play action. And Mike somehow threads the needle there to OBJ. That's that arm strength. Exactly. When you think arm strength, you don't just think oh, being oh. able to throw it 60 yards down the full field, but get the ball exactly where he placed it right there without the defender being able to pick it off. It's throw power is amazing. You're talking about number seven. Vic, looking verticals here. And he gets tripped up behind the line. That's Khalil Mack. We'll get his first sack of the game. It'll be a loss of eight. Hey, let's go. Eagle, eagle. Not too many people can trip up Michael Vick when he commits to the run like that, but Khalil Mack is one of those special talents that can. There's Todd Gurley out of the backfield. Will be close to the first down. It's going to be third and one after the gain of 17. I'll tell you what, if he didn't go for the spin, I feel like he picks up that first down. Just needs a yard. He'll hand it off to Gurley, and he'll get that and more. So that'll move the chains. Ball at the 41-yard line. 3.16 to go before the half. We talked about all the points they put up in the semifinals, but it's been a defensive affair here in the first half. Yes, it has. Vic, the lefty. Gets it to OBJ, who breaks a tackle. All the way down to the 31-yard line before primetime wraps him up. And you know what it's been? It's been, you know, when you look at the score, it looks like a defensive struggle. But there's been a lot of yards. It's been that bend but don't break. And the defense coming up big towards the end, uh, whether it's with an interception or a huge stop. Yeah, the red zone has been very tough for both of our competitors. Making some adjustments here on first and 10 at the 31 after the big game by OBJ. And Bill O'Brien will step in for a timeout for Joe Rice. Give him a little extra time to put together the best play call possible because this is going to be a tight half. I think he had a little fatigue there too, which is why he was. You mentioned he's had the ball a lot. You know, you've, you've thrown some interceptions, you've turned it over, you've gained a ton of yards. You just have no points to show for it. He's throwing the ball 80% of the time. Eight passes on 10 plays, and we're here at the two-minute warning. And I'm not going to say I'm surprised. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised at how tight the game and, uh, it, you know, I did not expect to see the turnovers because typically you don't go into a game expecting these turnovers, but we're seeing the best of everything. Gurley spins away from one. And Darius Slay ends up bringing him down at the 17. First and 10 in the red zone for Joe Rice. Well, that middle of the field is wide open. You called it, and that bl the block and the plays were designed for him to go to his left, to the strong side, the trip side of the field. But he just saw the opening, and he took it upfield to get the four yards. Up under center. And we'll have a timeout on the other side by CJ. 58 seconds to go, second and six. He's trying to save some time that maybe he can get the ball back. Second and six from the 13. Gurley trying to get to the edge. Got caught up on his blocker. Boy, if he gets by that cleanly, he might have been in for six. No, because they did not set the edge. You're right. Him running into his blockers what gave the defender time to set the edge and get the tackle for loss. So, so, so. Two big plays coming up here. Third and eight. Eagle, eagle. Ball at the 15-yard line, trailing by a field goal is Joe Rice. Here comes the pressure. Can't get rid of it. And CJ will use his final timeout. And here comes the kicking team. And I learned from Josh Scobie of the Jacks, who we had on one of our broadcasts. 
You do not settle for a field goal. You get a field goal. Oh, yeah. He was upset when I said settle for three. He said respect what he has to do as well. He's like, you get to get three. You take three. You never settle for it. And we got a three to three game here in the bottom of the second. In prime time. Up the sideline. Breaks a tackle or two in the kicker. Finally brought him down, and that brings smiles to CJ here before the end of the half. Wow, huge play. Huge play, and now the question is, will he be able to capitalize off it? And I'm not talking about scoring a field goal, not settling for a field goal, but getting into the end zone with 30, 30 seconds left in this half. No timeouts. Three to three ball game after Deion Sanders brought it all the way back to the 20 yard line. Loss of one Flex on first round. down. You gotta be careful here, the clock is a running. McNabb can't take a sack. Cannot take a sack. And he's just gonna get out of bounds and now you got a decision to make. Yeah, and I think the safe decision is to kick that field goal and get points on the board. But you know what, maybe you don't play it safe and that's not <laughs> how you get here. So we'll see what CJ decides to do. And he will kick the three. And a free three points, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this was one where you get a return and you try to just run the clock out, go into halftime 3-3, three, three, but because of Deion Sanders' return, you're up by a field goal. Well, you've seen this kick to the sideline several times by both of our competitors. And this happened to be the one time that Deion brought it all the way back for a free three. One second to go before the half. And take a look at it again, Franco Harris leading the way. 31 doing nothing, but watching. And then you're hoping Todd Gurley and your kicker can bring him down. And they barely do. Four down, four down. I think Gurley. And that's how the half will come to an end. Six to three. We were joking about it. No, you we just know. mentioned that we expect a high scoring game and it may end. And you specifically said 6-3, so if they don't score anything this half, then I'll call you a prophet because <laughs> you call that. So no touchdowns. We've had several times we've had our competitors get down into the red zone, but unable to capitalize. Seeing a couple turnovers and three field goals in that first half. I'll tell you what, I love this setup and everything about it, but with halftime with these... You know, these games are so intense. I, I thought we'll have like a two, three minute at halftime to let the guys go to the restroom, drink some water, get their mind right, but we go right into it. Madden doesn't play. Moss. Cuts it back. He might take this to the crib. The 10, 5, touchdown, Randy Moss. Forget about it. I'll tell you what, and Joe Rice likes that, and that's why you can never count a guy like him down, and you have to score every chance you get because you never know when Joe Rice is going to put points on the board. One play, 68 yards, as Randy Moss gets away from Dion and cuts it back on Darius Slay. You had five defenders with legitimate chances to make the tackle, and they could not bring down Randy Moss. So it's 10-6 to six now. Got some giveaways coming up in the fourth quarter of this one. The final here from NRG Stadium. Scott Cole, Indy Kalu along with you. And we got one half to decide who is going on to California to represent the Houston Texans in January. Up underneath, Tyreek Hill. Able to spin away to the 46. I'll tell you what, that was a nice job being patient Ohio, and waiting on that Ohio. route to open up and a nice job blocking to give that route a time uh, to get Ohio. wide open. Flex round, flex round. Give away 500 Cut. new Hopkins cards. And on the barrier, he does get his feet in bounds at the 21. Huge throw. Trips to the right. Ohio, Tyree killed to the left. Who's winded. Cut. Looking fatigued, so he goes to Franco Harris at the 13, and this time he holds on. He does hold on. That's a big pickup. Now the question is, do you try to run up for the first down, or do you go deep and try to score? 
Touch. Stay aggressive with the play call. It looks like he's staying aggressive. Throws it high to Randy Moss. Talk about you, you, you failed on a couple attempts down here, Andy. Right? I think you got to be aggressive at this point. No, you do. And again, Ohio. when you see that man Ohio. right there that you're playing, you have to stay aggressive because that's the Back only foul. way you can knock him out. Trips to the Ohio. left, Delaney Walker at the tight end. Fournette in the backfield, and here's motion across the formation with Randy Moss. He has him on the slant, doesn't throw it. Decides to get it to OBJ. I mean, he had Randy Moss with an opportunity at about the five-yard line. I'll tell you what, it's easy from where we're sitting because <laughs> I saw that as well, but that, that may be a play that you always have one or two plays a game you wish you could have back. That's one that CJ would like to have back. Boy, do you kick the field goal here. It's going to come to the line here. Back Fourth round, and two. Sign, he wants an Ohio, opportunity to take Ohio. the lead. McNabb. They pick up the rush. Looking to the corner and knocked away by Jones. And it's going to be a turnover on downs. You know, hindsight's 20 20, and it's easy to say he should have gone for the three, but I like the play call. I like the fact that he respects what Joe Rice is able to do, and he knows he's eventually going to have to score touchdowns if he wants to win this game. I respect that play call, even though it didn't work out for CJ. Trips to the left. The old head in Madden probably would have kicked the field goal there. Yeah, and that's probably well, why the I was school guys go for yeah, it. Yeah, I, I was kicking field goals. I was, <laughs> I was punting. I, I was following the the rule books, and that's why uh, I had to retire years <laughs> ago. Second and nineteen now after the loss. Ball at the four. He's in his own end zone, and wide open is Randy Moss. How many times have I said that today? Huge pickup. All the way out to the 45-yard line, a gain of 41. I'll tell you what, and the one guy who did not use Donovan McNabb seems to be having the most success in this tournament with Michael Vick. And it's not with Michael Vick's legs, but with his strong arm that he's getting all the success. Hey, we really go. haven't seen Vick get free. We really haven't seen him run with tight, tight, Michael tight, Vick. Tight, tight, watch left. We go to Gurley. But here's something you have to take into account when playing against a quarterback like Michael Vick or playing Michael Vick because there are not too many like him. Even if he's not running, you respect the fact that he can, and it does affect the rest of your defense. Yeah, sometimes you got to spy yes. even when the guy's not, not working it. Shannon Sharp. Ball marked at midfield at the 50-yard line. 1.30 to go here in the third. Eagle, eagle. Oh, it's, oh, it's. Four point ball game. Joe Rice with the lead in the ball. Third and four. He throws that in a tight window and couldn't get his feet in bounds. Maybe got one. And now we got a huge fourth and four here. I was going to say, Scott, I don't want to overstate it. And, you know, there's a lot of time left. Let me make sure I say all that. But this may be the biggest down of the game thus far. Remember, we got a giveaway coming up. HoustonTexans.com backslash Madden on a huge oh, yeah. fourth down conversion to Gurley. That keyword's clowny, like Jadavion clowny. Keyword clowny at HoustonTexans.com backslash Madden. Have an opportunity to get yourself a DeAndre Hopkins guard to add to your Madden ultimate team. I'll tell you what, CJ can use Jadavion Clowney right now on his defense because uh, <laughs> Michael Vick is in a nice little rhythm for Joe Rice, and he's just driving down the field. Remember, this is salary cap mode. That's why you might not see uh, Jadavion Clowney or uh, J.J. Watt out there. They're too expensive. Yeah. They are yeah. absolutely too expensive to put on your team. And that tells you how good those guys are. You know what, and I, what I love about that setup is it's not just the strategy on the field, but the strategy putting your team together by having the salary cap and, you know, having pick and choose where you're going to spend the big money. That's well, a lot like traditional football. A lot of that money is spent at the quarterback. Yes. When you talk about McNabb, and especially Michael Vick. Hey. Vick hands it off to Gurley. He's still on his feet for a moment there. A gain of three. 
Spins his way to the 18, he's in the red zone. And here in the fourth quarter, if you're CJ, you absolutely, it's a must to hold him to three. That's why if you, you know, if you go for the field goal, we talked about hindsight 2020. If you get up a touchdown here, it's still a one score game, you're down by eight. But a touchdown right here, would be really bad news for CJ. And we're gonna have a third down from the 14 yard line. Hey, let's go! Double, double, double! Joe Rice. Lake, Lake, Lake. See him there with four minutes to go before his opportunity to punch his ticket. And then finally, Michael Vick takes off in a baseball slide down to the seven. It was just a matter of time, man. Hey, now go. this one run was a huge run that picks up first down and really puts CJ in a tight four spot down, here. What is it? You know, you see that a lot in the league when you talk about a Sean Watson or you talk about a Cam Newton. It's really the red zone. You know, when the quarterback can use his legs, it can be absolutely detrimental to the opponent. Runs the play clock all the way down here on second and goal and a huge sack out of Grigsby. Gives us the Superman pose and for a moment, keeping CJ's dream alive of trying to keep this a one-score game. The clock's on the move, though. Third and goal from the 15. Double, double. Big audibles. Quick throw to Randy Moss wow. on the oh. wheel, and he couldn't hang on. Had it for a moment. I actually thought that was it. a fumble, but I guess they considered that was not a completion, and now he does have to go settle, sorry, settle for the field goal. <laughs> well, that makes it a seven-point game. You know, they used to have the algorithm in the game mm -hmm. where things like that could happen. You could throw the challenge flag in right. competitive play. Right, right. But we're, we're like, well, just no, none of that. Just make it right. <laughs> make the call right. And so certainly an incompletion and a nice return out to the midfield by Franco Harris. So you're trailing by a touchdown, 2.21 to go. You got the ball in the 50. You need a score, but not too quickly, Indy. Translation, this is the great game we wanted to have <laughs> where it comes down to the last drive, and you have to be smart with the time. Now, if you can score before the two-minute warning, that's a different story. Wide opens Randy Moss. Now, here's the thing, and I'm glad you brought it up. I would never bought into the whole let's score but let's worry about the clock you score when you can score because you never know what's going to happen the next play so you just put you, you put the onus on the defense to stop them if you're able to get into the end zone got the snap off before the two minute warning McNabb with time and a man Randy Moss and pinning the extra point we're going to be tied here in Houston and he said one stop just need one stop yeah, man he's talking to his defensive coordinator his defensive <laughs> players he's saying we need you to stop him Bring the punter out, make sure he doesn't get that first down. Man, this is a heck of a game. Joe Rice, CJ both living up to expectations. How many times do you get to talk about a game that's going to basically take you to the end of the fourth quarter? It's Joe Rice making the trip over from Georgia. Take a look at this again. Wide open is Randy Moss. Looked like a cover too hard flat, but the safety was taken up by the man in the middle, both of them. And you saw the safety trying to recover, and he was just there too late. Still plenty of time. Joe Rice. Tight window to Tim Brown. All that for two yards. I'll tell you what, nice start to the, uh, the series on the defense for C.J. Ball to 40. Vic. And there's a sack. That's a coverage sack, my friend. Well, that is a coverage sack, and that's a big play, but you still have to do that two more times for CJ to get the ball back. Hey, let's go! Slam, slam, slam. 52. Well, if I'm Joe Rice, so, you're, you're so, thinking so. about this clock as well. So, so, so. Three timeouts apiece, and I'm saying, I'm talking Eagle. about maybe running this clock a bit. Line, line. Play action. Huge third down here. Vic. And they can't get back to cover up Randy Moss. 
and it's a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. He's in field goal range. And that is huge, and now it's all about the clock. It's all about utilizing the timeouts, and I would expect to see about three runs and would expect CJ to call some timeouts, but that was huge. That's what put the game in the hands of Joe Rice right now, and I expect him to utilize his running game and his offensive line. But that route. That's big. That route has been there when he's needed it. Hey, four down, four down. Wait, And he'll hand it off to Gurley. Let's see if he decides to lay down, and he will at the 17 after the gain of 13. And you see Joe Rice smile after that play. I think he knows that it's getting very, very close to becoming a reality that he wins this tournament with that play. Well, he was the favorite coming in. I'll tell you what, I understand that play, but you really better be confident in your field goal game because Gurley was on his way to the end zone. And again, I understand it. Uh, oh, but because I'm so horrible when it comes to field goals, uh, I, I think I would have gone and tried to score the touchdown. You're just not going to see an elite running back three down, three down. fumble right here. It's just not going to happen. Right. And there's a timeout from CJ. That'll be his two second. Tights, so you can stop the clock one more time. Trying to Four ice down. the kicker. Even, even. Yeah, that's you might want to hold it in your back pocket for the opportunity. Of course, there's ways to get around that scenario too. We'll see how Joe Rice plays this out. Stretching it outside to Irvin, who lays down not to take the hit. And now he set himself up for the field goal here. And CJ will use a timeout. Yeah, it was a little early when I said icing the kicker. For some reason, I thought uh, Joe Rice was going for an early field goal before that first so timeout. Now Joe Rice is going to run another play instead of kicking the field goal here to avoid leaving it some extra time on the clock. He's got Gurley in there, third and 17. And here comes the stretch play. And he'll lay down on the left hash. And he's going to have to get a timeout here. Two seconds remaining. <laughs> wow. Here comes the potential game-winning field goal with the opportunity to represent the Houston Texans in California in January. And the kick is up, and it is good. Joe Rice is your Houston Texans champ. Wow, I tell you what, you could not ask for a better game, Scott. You had one guy who dominated and blew out his first opponent. Then you had another guy in Joe Rice who won by a healthy margin but just consistently uh, was able to have a balanced attack. To see those guys come together and for the game to end in a field goal, you couldn't ask for a more entertaining game. And this is what I like. You talk about sportsmanship. I'm not sure what they're saying, but you could just see in the body language the respect they have for one another. CJ's obviously disappointed that he's not going to represent the Houston Texans, but you just see the respect there, and I love it. Yeah, probably talking about that big third down where Randy Moss got up the sideline, able to get the ball all the way down to the 30-yard line. That was the play of the game. And really for CJ, it probably felt like he had him covered up. Dominating the game in every fashion. Nearly 300 yards of offense. The final score, 16-13. to Joe Rice is your winner. Scott Cole and Indy Kalu back with you. And... We were expecting some high score, and we didn't really see it until the second half. Right. But the guy that we, we, you know, the community thought was going to win ended up coming through in the clutch. Yeah, 70% of them said Joe Rice was going to win this tournament, and they were absolutely correct. And, and again, I, I couldn't ask for anything more. I had a blast doing this last year, but I don't think we had a game this no. close, this tight. And, man, it was just fun to watch. Everything's been awesome. Yes. Congratulations to Joe Rice, by the way. Yeah, and I've, I've seen it from really all across Madden. The, the amount of parity and the amount yes. of great players starting to come up. I mean, Silent Soldier came in here last year and, and, and played really well. But Joe Rice did what he had to do uh, to, to, to move on, and that's really all about it. It doesn't matter if you win by 30 or you win by three, you're still moving on. Right. Now he's going to California to represent the Houston Texans <laughs> right now, so we're all going to be getting behind him and cheering him on. So just an awesome, awesome tournament. Yeah, two, two great back-to-back -back champions yes. in Silent Soldier. And now Joe Rice, who's – Standing by with Rico Williams. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Joe, you were the favorite coming in here. You had a lot of pressure on you, but you were able to get it done. What was going through your mind during that last drive? 
Uh, I'm, I just knew how to get three points. He, I started at the 40 yard line, so I needed 30 yards to get a first down. CJ played a great game. I just I had to a great pass for the game. Now, you had an opportunity to score a touchdown, but you didn't. Were you worried about that coming back to bite you at all? Oh, no, because I, I knew I could run the clock out to zero no matter what he did. So it's going down was a way smarter decision. Now, you're going to actually get a chance to represent the Houston Texans. Talk to us about what that feels like. Oh, the Houston Texans have been great this whole weekend. They gave me an awesome jersey. They gave me a hat. They've been a great uh, organization. Well, you're going to be able to carry this momentum forward. Anybody out there you want to say hey to? I just want to shout out everyone who helped get me here. Uh, Young Kiv. I want to shout out Crush, Jeff. You know, everybody was in the parties with us. And then shout out my family. All right. Well, back to you, Scott and Indy. Well, appreciate it, Rico. There's your champion, Joe Rice. So, well, you you saw all three games. Final thoughts? Just excitement. Uh, proud that Joe Rice is going to represent my former team when he goes to California. And you know what? Shout out to all these guys that came down. Uh, they just put they, they put together some great games, and it was fun to watch. And they motivated me. I, I'm going to get back on the sticks now. You need to get uh, back I'm gonna on go the home sticks. And get back on the sticks, and maybe I'll be in this tournament next. <laughs> Hey, don't, it's don't open. Too hard it's now. open. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll miss you up here, but if you're out there, man, I'll, I'll let it happen. I want to thank the entire Houston Texans organization. It's been a great time here in Houston. We have Pittsburgh coming up on Thursday. New England is coming up on uh, the weekend on Sunday. And there you see Rico and Joe Rice, the champion, getting it done. Well, for Indy Kalu, I'm Sky Cole and all the rest of the folks out here with the Houston Texans. It's been our honor. We'll see you next time at the next Madden Club Championship.